Assalamu alaikum, bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, today we'll continue our ECG course and today presentation uh, on AV uh, re-entry tachycardia. My name is Ahmed Al-Hadidi. I am emergency medicine consultant. Uh, when we talk about atrioventricular re-entry tachycardia, uh, it's re-entry circuit formed between the AV node, uh, normal uh, conducting system and accessory pathway. Uh, like one causing uh, uh, Wolf Parkinson White syndrome. So during tachycardia or during the AV re-entry tachycardia, the features of uh, uh, pre-excitation is uh, lost, like short PR interval and the delta wave, as we can see here, it will be lost during the AV re-entry tachycardia. Uh, usually AV re-entry tachycardia is triggered by premature atrial contraction or premature ventricular contraction and it is divided into orthodromic or antidromic conduction according to the conduction through the AV node and conduction through the accessory pathway. So if conduction from the atria to the ventricle through the AV node is from atria to ventricle, this is orthodromic re-entry tachycardia. If from the ventricle uh, to the atria through the AV node, this is antidromic re-entry tachycardia. And of course, would be uh, from the atria to the ventricle through the accessory pathway. Uh, when we speak about orthodromic conduction, again, uh, the anti-grade conduction from the atria to the ventricle is uh, through the AV node and bundle of Hess. And the retrograde conduction from the ventricle to uh, the atria is through the accessory pathway. Usually this leads to normal narrow complex tachycardia because the conduction is conducted or the impulse is conducted through the uh, bundle branches, both uh, bundle branches right and left in the same time. And uh, uh, usually B wave is buried in QRS itself or even maybe uh, uh, presented retrograde above uh, uh, after the QRS. As ECG criteria for orthodromic uh, AV re-entry tachycardia, you will find the narrow complex tachycardia unless there is bundle branch block or apparent conduction with fast rate. Ventricular rate usually between 150 and 300 beat per minute and inverted B waves may come uh, uh, after or following the QRS or even uh, maybe buried into the QRS itself. Sometimes there is rate-related uh, ST depression due to rate-related scheme. As we can see here also, narrow complex tachycardia, no B wave because it's buried into the QRS uh, uh, complexes and rate between 150 and uh, 300. This rate here is around 200 beat per minute. This rhythm is difficult to uh, differentiate between AV nodal re-entry tachycardia, which we will speak about in different video. Uh, for the second part, antidromic conduction. Antidromic conduction means that the conduction through the uh, AV node and bundle of Hess is retrograde from ventricle to atria, and conduction through the accessory pathway is antigrade from the atria to the ventricle. This leads to wide QRS complexes as the uh, impulses or as activation of the ventricles appear first uh, through the accessory pathway. And uh, usually uh, it's mistaken as ventricular tachycardia. And of course, if in doubt, treat as ventricular tachycardia. The ECG criteria, you will find wide complex tachycardia and ventricular rate again between 150 to 250 B wave. Uh, usually inverted and follow the QRS, like you can see here, this is inverted B wave following the QRS or maybe heading into ST segment. Here B wave uh, follow QRSs and white complex tachycardia and first differential diagnosis is ventricular tachycardia. Here again, this is antidromic uh, uh, AV re-entry tachycardia. As you can see, white complex tachycardia, B wave inferred, inverted following the QRSs and uh, differential diagnosis as ventricular tachycardia. And after conversion to sinus rhythm or after controlling the rhythm, you will start to see the short PR interval and white QRS and delta waves uh, as here, delta waves, short PR interval, fault Parkinson White syndrome uh, characteristic. As a management of every entry tachycardia, it's 
must be differentiated between hemodynamically stable and hemodynamically unstable patients. For hemodynamically stable patients, we have to differentiate orthodromic AV re-entry tachycardia is treated as AV nodal re-entry tachycardia first with vagal maneuvers, and if not successful, uh, uh, give adenosine or calcium channel blockers. For antidromic AV re-entry tachycardia, contraindicated to give any AV nodal uh, blocking agents like adenosine or calcium channel blockers, treatment uh, with uh, amidrone or bricanamide like ventricular tachycardia. And of course, for hemodynamically unstable patients, uh, you have to do urgent synchronized cardioversion. Thank you so much and uh, uh, see you next video, AV nodal re-entry tachycardia.